Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, module on IP addressing within the OCI Virtual Cloud Network Service. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So first look at the different kinds of IP addresses supported by the service, starting with the private IP addresses. Now each instance you place in a subnet has at least one primary private IP address. That's, that's, that's mandatory. Each instance can have two or more virtual network interface cards we looked into the previous uh, module. Now the first one is called the primary virtual network interface uh, or the primary VNIC. Uh, the, the additional ones are called secondary VNIC or secondary VNIC if you have more than two. So how does this work? Uh, remember we talked about this earlier, you, you create a virtual cloud network, side annotation, uh, and then you divide this network into the smaller networks, subnets. Why? Because you place your instances within, within the subnets and the instances draw their IP addressing and network configuration from the subnets in which they are placed. So right here, what I'm showing you is this instance has two network interface cards. This is the primary, let's say, and this is the secondary. So it has two uh, network interface cards. And the primary VNIC, as it's shown here, has a primary private IP address. Uh, remember, it's mandatory. So if you put in place instances, you they absolutely need to have uh, a, prime, uh, a private IP address. Now, you are not just restricted to one I private IP address for instance. You could have uh, one is the, the first one is the primary private IP, but you can have additional private IPs and these are called secondary private IPs. So you have a primary private IP and you can have secondary private IPs. How many? You can have 31 additional uh, secondary private IPs. And this pattern is repeated across the VNICs you have. And in some cases, these you have something like 52 VNICs here. So you can have a whole set of primary uh, and secondary private IP addresses there. Now, private IP is mandatory, right? This is how the instances are uh, configured within VCN and this is how they communicate, etc., etc., right? Uh, and this is how we can reach them. Um, each of these uh, private IPs can have an optional public IP assigned to it. Why optional? Most of the cases you really don't need a public IP, but in some cases if you do, uh, you can assign um, an, a public IP uh, to a private IP address. Now how does this work? Uh, each uh, one question you would ask is how do I know what is primary and what is secondary or uh, VNIC, right? So every VM has one primary VNIC, how you create this when you create, when you launch the instance. Um, and we'll we'll go and look into this uh, into this in the in, in the demo. So as uh, and when you add a secondary VNIC, whether one or more, new Ethernet device is added and is recognized by the instance operating system. So as you can see here in this particular uh, graphic, you have VM one which has only one uh, um, you know single uh, VNIC instance, just a primary VNIC, uh, and you can see here VNIC one is living in subnet A, just one of those. Now, in the virtual machine 2, VM2, it, it has two VNICs. So there is VNIC2 here and there's VNIC3 here. And, and the interesting thing here is the two VNICs are in two different subnets uh, within the same VCN. So if you can see here, VNIC2 is in subnet A and VNIC3 is in subnet B. Why would we do that? We would do that because this particular virtual machine might be a virtual appliance, virtual networking appliance, which is sitting here and is sort of monitoring those two subnets for security or, uh, you know, intrusion de detection or, you know, any other, other purpose, right? It's like those kind of virtual net, uh, appliance scenarios. In case of VM3, things get even more interesting. So like VM2, it has two VNICs, right? These are connected here. But now these two VNICs are living in two separate uh, virtual networks altogether, right? So this is virtual network one and this is virtual network two. So it's in completely different uh, virtual uh, cloud networks. Why would you do this? This particular uh, virtual machine is doing something uh, f uh, around uh, management. So if you have many uh, VCNs, you, ne you need a way to you know sort of manage some things in there. You would use a configuration like this where you have a leg so to say, in each of these VCNs, and you can reach them for um, for um, uh, you know sort of have management network for isolated access.
Now we looked into private IPs. We looked into you know uh, network interface cards, whether it's primary, whether it's secondary. Public IPs. Let's talk about public IP. Public IP uh, is an IPv4 address that is reachable from the internet. Now, um, as we said earlier, public IP is assigned to a private IP object on on the resource. So whether it's an instance where you want to uh, assign a public IP or it's a load balancer, uh, those are valid uh, use cases. Um, it's possible to assign a given resource multiple public IPs across uh, one or more uh, Vnix. So what does that look like? So the same example as we had earlier, you have a VCN, you have multiple uh, subnets, uh, you have one subnet here, and this has multiple uh, Vnix. So there's a primary Vnix, there's a secondary Vnix, right? Now, earlier we saw it had a primary private IP address and secondary private IPs, but each of these can also now have a public IP. Uh, it's optional, but you could have a public IP. In these cases, there is no public IP, right? So these are all just private. So you can have multiple scenarios like that, uh, where you can have a really complex sort of a, a private public uh, IP addressing scheme. Now, uh, there are two kinds of public IP addresses within OCI uh, networking service. One is called ephemeral, the other one is called reserved. The ephemeral is temporary and existing just for the lifetime of the instance. So the instance terminates, the IP address is gone. Reserved is persistent and exists beyond the lifetime of the instance is assigned to. It can be unassigned and then reassigned to another instance. So in cases where you want to not change your public IPs because you might have downstream load balancers or whatnot using them, applications using them, you could assign reserved IP addresses. So even if your instance dies uh, and you have HA and all that taken care of, you can still take that IP and assign to another uh, instance you create uh, and your application is not uh, affected. Um, ephemeral IP can be assigned to primary private IP only. So in a virtual network interface card, how many pr primary private IPs we have? We have only one. How many secondary we have? 31. So, uh, so the uh, so it can only be ephemeral can only go to one uh, the primary private, but reserved can go. You can have thirty two reserved public uh, IPs because you, one primary uh, private plus thirty one secondary private IPs can all have uh, reserved uh, public IPs. There is no charge for using public IP, uh, including uh, when the reserved public IP addresses are unassociated. Now, with this, you, I mean, you should be very careful when you create a public IP because these are uh, precious resources, right? There's, now we have IPv6 uh, because IPv4 is sort of running out uh, of, you know, available address spaces, etc. So when should you use public IPs? Now, in most of the cases, you probably don't need public IPs. Uh, public IPs can be assigned to instances. It's not recommended in most of the cases. Um, it can be, uh, in some cases, we have a public IP address. If you're using a public load balancer, Oracle provides a public IP. You cannot choose or edit, uh, but you can definitely view. You can take a look at what it looks like. NAT gateway, we will talk about gateways um, in the next module. Uh, dynamic routing gateways and so on and so forth, right? If you are running Kuban manage Kubernetes, uh, you get um, uh, a public IP you can you can view, but you cannot choose or edit. Um, in in some cases, you cannot even view them, uh, and uh, you know you definitely cannot choose or edit, but you cannot even view. So good example is something called an internet gateway. Um, we'll talk about this in the next module. You cannot see what public IP it has. Um, and, and so on and so forth, right? Different, the other uh, services where you might not, you get a public IP, but you cannot even view, view those.